everyone, welcome to our special weekly program of TVRI Yogyakarta, Jogja Highlight. I'm Meta Dokang and I'm your host today. Everyone, this is Kulon Progo, one of the districts in Yogyakarta. Kulon Progo means west of River Progo in Yogyakarta. And it has motto Binangun, stands for harmonious, safe, faithful, and of course beautiful. And it's depicted by a gunungan from Sedo Puppet in Yogyakarta. And not only in Kulon Progo, I will take you around Yogyakarta to see the wonderful of Yogyakarta. And here is Jogja highlight for you. At the first segment, we will go to Bantul first to see how a batik craftsman tries to introduce a new motif of batik and it's called the batik character motif. It's way to go to boost his sales. And after that, we will go to Gunung Kidul to see the current condition that the young generation right now living the blacksmith of profession. And then we last we go to Sleman to see the peacock breeder that not only just fun and easy to keeping peacock but it's also promising and this is the whole information for you. In the center of handicraft, Batik Giriloyo Imogiri Bantul, not a few gave birth to young Batik artisan. One of them is Akiar Muzaki, the manager of Sidomukti Batik Studio, who continues to innovate to produce unique and different batik works. Batik products that are being made and pursued are batik facial character motif, especially the facial characters of a number of features that are widely known to the public, such as the comedy film character Mr. Bean, National feature Abdurrahman Wahid or Gusdur, Airlangga Hartanto, and others. According to the crafter, the breakthrough he made was the result of his own creation ideas to boost his business. For batik painting motif of Airlangga Hartanto's face characters, made as an effort to seize opportunities amid the euphoria ahead of the 2024 presidential elections. While other considerations are because this face painting batik is still minimal production, but there are many customers, so that the business opportunities are open. The face character painting motif is made as a separate motif in the one cloth, which outside is still decorated with the batik motif in according to the crafter. If for the middle to upper class batik, face painting is in a great demand. To create this face character painting batik itself, the crafter took three years to experiment until finally succeeded in producing it. The price of batik cloth with face character painting motif is sold in the price range of 850000 up to 1500000 each seat. Failed products that are usually thrown away because they are unused in the hand of the number of artisans in Bantul are actually utilized as art material. Such as ceramic products that fail in the firing process are utilized and remade into unique decorative artworks and have more economic value. In order to reintroduce ceramic craft art to the public, number of artists in Bantul display decorative ceramic artworks at a gallery in Taman Tirto, Kasihan, Bantul. The ceramic artworks display are not market ceramic craft, but decorative work, one of which was created by artists by utilizing failed product material. According to Abdul Joko Nugroho, one of the creators of this work, in every manufacture of ceramic product through the process of reduction or firing. In the firing process is not always perfectly successful, so it will be a failed product that will usually be discarded or not utilized. For artists, failed products actually have their own artistic value. 
if utilized and reprocessed into new work of art. There are various forms from decorative artwork made from failed ceramic product, created according to the imagination of the creator. What characterizes this artwork is the color of the art object. With the display of this artwork, it is hoped that it will add insight to the community. Get to know more ceramic craft artworks. The high demand for agricultural equipment make iron craftsmen in Gunung Kidul district overwhelmed to meet market demands. This is due to the absence of the next generation of blacksmith in Gunung Kidul region. One of the center for making iron agricultural tools or known as blacksmith in Gunung Kidul Regency, Prisley in Kajar Dua Hamlet, Karang Tengah, Sub District, Kamranewon Monosari Gunung Kidul Regency, from year to year continues to experience the decline in production. The business of producing various agricultural equipment that has been passed down from generation to generation since 1982. Over time has decreased in addition to being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The decline in the production is more due to the reduction of the next generation in this business. The younger generation prefers other jobs and does not continue this family legacy business. As a result, one of the Center for Making Iron Agricultural Tools in Kajar Dua Hamlet, Karantanga Sub-District, Kapanewon Monosari, Gunung Kidul is overwhelmed by market demand, especially in the rainy season like today. Demand increase compared to normal days. Even order come from outside the city, such as Wonogiri, Semarang, Boyolali, Central Java, and surrounding area. Despite the shortage of craftsmen, production is still carried out optimally to continue to maintain the needs of the community. This blacksmith hope, this hereditary heritage business continue to be sustainable with the young generation who return to pursue the work. Keeping peacock has been done by Danang Krisnandi, people from Jamblangan Purwo Binangun Pakam Sleman since 2019. Initially, this young man only keep blue peacock or Indian peacocks. It is scientified name is Pafo Christatus. Only in 2090, he also keep green peacocks Pafo Muticus native to Indonesia. Different from Indian peacocks that can be bought and keep freely. To keep green peacocks must get permission from the government, in this case the local natural resource conservation center. Because this type of green peacock native to Indonesia is a protected animal. In its maintenance, peacocks must be have a minimum cage measuring by 3 or 4 meters with a cage height of 3 meters and the cage must be well lit and have a good air circulation. For the picker, it's quite easy because this bird is more resistant to weather. While for feed is also not difficult, just given a mixture of brown rice, ground corn, seeds and cricket. Currently, Danang has two pairs of green peacock broads and four pairs of Indian broads. Where for one breeding season, one brood usually lays 12 to 15 eggs with a survival rate to a adolescent of 75%. Indian peacock chick aged to 6 months are sold for 3 million to 6 million rupiah while for a pair for adult peacock sold 30 million rupiah while for green peacocks the price will be much higher and must be licensed and certified from the natural resource conservation center The travel trend right now is take vacation while learning. 
and Yogyakarta as student city is currently ready for this trend. We will go to Sleman, try to plant orchard and also gin. And this is the whole information for you. The year-end holiday activities of artists and culturalists were held at the educational village of Watu Lumbung Kretek Bantul, attended by dozens of artists, writers and cultural observers from various regions in Java and outside the island of Java. Apart from being a gathering place between artists and writers to fill the 2021 year-end holidays, this activity also shared knowledge and experience as well as reaffirming their professionalism and totality as artists or culturalists. In the educational village of Watu Lombong, the artists are not only treated to various art spots and art exhibition, but also open stage art entertainment activities. In this place, the artists also spontaneously recite poems by literary works as well as expressing poetry. Some of the poems recite include stories about the condition of George Jakarta during the pandemic as well as poems about mother's figures inspired by welcoming's Mother's Day. Construction and artificial lake Imogiri Chu in the area of Padukuhan Nogosari Chu, Kalurahan Wukirsari, Imogiri Bantul, which has been completed, making the atmosphere in this hamlet looks different from before it was built, and now looks more beautiful. Because looking at the condition of the environment, that is more beautiful and beautiful. It is the potential to be developed into a tourist attraction destination by the surrounding community. Surrounding communities revealed if the artificial lake that has been built by this government is actually used to anticipate disaster flooding in the Chelang River which often overflows every year when heavy rains fall. Until now, the community is still waiting for the handover of the artificial lake to the community to be managed. The plan is to go to the main road to the Embung Imogiri 2 area will be built a bridge. While waiting for the inauguration time, the artificial lake is used by the community for cultivation and maintenance of fresh water. The potential of orchard in the Sleman area is a blessing force of its own that can increase tourist visit and lift the economy of the community, especially orchard farmers. The existence of orchard farmers in Yogyakarta, especially in the slope of Merapi Sleman Regency, is an attraction for tourists, especially for orchard lovers from inside and outside Yogyakarta. With beautiful flowers, and can thrive in tropical climates or yet become a prima donna in the community. With nature that support, orchard farmers in the slope of Merapi are able to develop various types of orchid, both species from various regions and hybrids or crossbreeds, with high sales, especially during the current pandemic. The Suleiman government itself plans to develop this orchid potential by launching an orchid village pilot and preservation of Merapi Orchid in Ngipi Sari Hamlet, Hargobinangun, Pakem Subdistrict, as a breeding, education, and tourism efforts managed by the local community. With the preservation of four famous orchid species such as Fanda Tricolor, Scorpio Ground Orchid, Oncidium Orchid, and Pigeon Orchid, with the support of the government, academics, and the local community, the existence of this orchard garden is expected to be a blessing force that is able to increase tourist visit and lift the economy of the community, especially orchard farmers. Now culinary time. Okay, Yogyakarta known as innovative, delicious, and also affordable cuisine. 
If in Bali they have bebek betutu, in Yogyakarta we have lele betutu. Lele is a catfish. So lele betutu is catfish dish with fair, uh, Balinese flavor. And then after we eat lele betutu, we will try the geprek coffee. It made from fruit and also skin of coffee, not from bean. Okay, and this is the whole information for you. Catfish, in addition to being favored by many people because the price is more affordable, also is a food source of animal protein that is easy to process into various types of dishes or side dishes. In Bantul, one of the food stall business owners in Patan village, Sumber Agunjutis, Bantul, innovated to make and serve processed catfish combined with Belenese specialties into catfish batutu. Even Bali is chicken batutu. In Bantul, it is now served in the form of catfish. According to the owner of the food stall, Fabri Darsono, the choice of catfish material to replace chicken because, in addition to the price, is more popular. Also because catfish is flexible as an animal food ingredient for various types of dishes. In processing and serving, catfish is served with typical processed batutu seasoning, lalap and sambal mata, typical of Bali, into a different menu. Namely, catfish batutu, which is no less delicious. Even now, the catfish batutu menu is starting to be soft after because the texture of soft savory catfish meat wrapped in batutu spices is an option as an iftar menu in the month of Ramadan. Febri Darsono admitted the food stall business is chartered at stall due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic situation until he finally chose to move to a business place in his own house. Determination and enthusiasm in menu innovation that continue to be carried out have a positive impact on the development of his business. In addition to the Batuto chicken menu which has many customers, now the Batuto catfish menu follows many customers. One portion of Batuto catfish complete with rice, lalap and sambal mata is sold for 17,000 rupiah. have thought that durian flower and seeds could be transformed into delicious and filling food. Like the innovation of Siti Kodira in Kulon Progo, who transformed durian flower and seeds into durian flower soup and geblek. This is flower soup durian as first glance is to look like ordinary soup, but when you look closely, you will not find shredded chicken or fish by durian flowers that have been processed in such a way. Starting from a durian-themed culinary competition held at the Bundores area, Banjaroyo Tourism Village, Kulon Progo, City Kodira found the idea to transform durian derivative into soup and chips that can be eaten even by people who don't like the smell of durian. City also explained that Pok Darwisa and the local government also provide support and guidance in the development of durian derivative process innovation that were considered to improve the welfare of residents, especially in Banyurejo tourism village. In addition to soto or soup and durian flour chip, city also possess other durian derivative such as skin and pongi or durian seeds into crispy meatballs and also geblek pongi. Enjoying drinking coffee does not have to be with drinks made from processed coffee beans but can also be mixed with the skin and coffee fruits and a mixture of coffee beans along with the pulp and skins added with honey not only give a natural coffee taste sensation but also rich benefit. Enjoying drinking coffee is not only from coffee that is processed from the seeds alone but also the whole of its coffee fruit itself. In the educational village Watulumbung Kretek Bantul, visitors will feel and enjoy a different coffee dish from coffee in general because coffee drinks are served in the form of whole coffee cherries which are ground and then brewed with hot water and added with pure honey. Until it becomes geprek coffee, 
which give a sensation to coffee lovers. Judging from the way it's served, Geprek Coffee is truly natural. Geprek Coffee creation initiated by Boy Rifai from Watulumbung Educational Village become a different way of enjoying coffee from the coffee concussion process raise the sensation of a combination of bitter taste from coffee skin and beans with the sweetness of lunching honey which has health benefits. Seeing this potential, Geprek Coffee has been looked at by the village government of Genang Harjor Tirto Moyo Wonogiri Central Java to build synergy together. Considering that the village of Genang Harjo is being developed into a centralized area of Liberica coffee commodities covering more than 51 hectares. Crystal guava is one of type guava that has fewer seeds. Not only has a crunchy flesh texture, but also soft and sweet compared to other guavas. The nutritional content is quietly high, making some people process it into several preparations. One of them is salad, which is most favored by the community. With abundant nutritional content, crystal guava brings many good health effects when consumed regularly. According to Slamet, one of the crystal guava sellers from Karanganyar, Kebumen, Central Java, who hang out around the Maguaharjo Ngemplak Sleman Stadium, crystal guava is starting to be known by the community. It is evident that sales from day to day, jambunya salad continues to increase. In a day, Slamet is able to spend 50 kilograms of crystal guava process it to make salad. Sold per portion of 10,000 rupiah, salad most preferred by buyers is a spicy flavor, but not a few who buy it without using processed flavor. Crystal guava plant cultivation in the country itself is relatively high. Both plant on a large scale and simply plant it in the yard. Many crystal guava plant cultivation proof that the demand for crystal guava is quite high in the market. Many business places closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic did not discourage culinary entrepreneurs from continuing to develop their business. The typical culinary business of the sea still has prospect even amid the pandemic. COVID-19 pandemic has a major impact on the culinary business sector. In order to continue to be able to survive culinary business activities must adapt to new community behavior, such as strict health rules and limit time and capacity when operating. One of the culinary business actors, Agusu Santos, states that business actors must change marketing strategies that are relevant to current condition. According to Agus, the culinary business still has prospect even in the midst of a pandemic. The selection of minus and location of culinary business is also very influential of the existence of culinary business that can survive. Agus Santo chose a traditional vegetable menu and seafood as well as a location in the Pendawa Harjo Sewan Bantul area with certain consideration. In Bantul, the basic ingredients of vegetable and traditional spices and fish products are abundant. While choosing a location because in Bantul, it is a tourist destination for culinary lovers from various regions. A business that has been open since early December 2020 as an effort to educate the public to keep up their business in the midst of various challenges. He also recruited 15 employees, all of whom were victims of layoff 
from a number of food stalls that were forced to close due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, it's a wrap everyone. It's time to us to go. It's been 30 minutes. I take you around Yogyakarta to see how wonderful is Yogyakarta. But don't forget to join us next week for another information. I will give you another information from culinary, tourist destination, and also several event, cultural event in Yogyakarta. Of course, in Jogja Highlight. I'm Meta Dokang and all crew of Jogja Highlight would like to say thank you very much for watching us. See you and goodbye.